This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 17. It says, Now the, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. A hey, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rekah Hakwadash. Double honor to the true leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, Great Millstone, also known as GMS. Citations to the Most High's men, the four corners of the earth, pushing this word of sincerity and the truth. And shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. This is your brother Banyam Yun from GMS, Mississippi, with the topic going into being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now let's get the book of First John in chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And how do you confess your sins? Through faith and through faith through the Holy Spirit. You know, and being filled with the Holy Spirit brings forth that particular confession. Being filled with the Holy Spirit of the Lord brings forth humility. It brings forth a humble and a contrite demeanor about yourself from the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you speak, the word usage that you use, the things that you do and you commit in your body and with the work and the labor of your hands. Being filled with the Holy Spirit from the time that you wake up and just manifesting that spirituality throughout your everyday events you know, and you map those out and compare those to the times that you're really kind of out of the spirit or you're not in the spirit or you may be irrational or you, or you may be hasty where the case may be you may have a moments of lack of judgment but those times that you are steadfast lead and pur purposely filled with the Holy Spirit of the Lord, meaning bringing forth and conjuring up that, 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 that spirit by practicing continuously. You know, you see that you walk differently. You know, it just kind of, when you compare of having it turned on versus having it turned off, you know, because the spirit is like fire. The spirit is like the wind. And sometimes that you're out of the spirit, you know, you have no control over that, but you can meditate, you can pray, you can watch something that inspires you, do something that inspires you. And that's how you reignite that fiery spirit back inside of you, you know, or simply just praying and begging and pleading very hard unto the Heavenly Father, you know, to create in you a clean heart, to renew a right spirit within you. And sometimes that's all it takes. As the, the topic goes into simply being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's get the book of Galatians. And we're going to get uh, chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, because what comes of the lust of the flesh? It says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led by this uh, of the spirit ye are not under the law because the spirit warreth against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit and as it goes into in verse 16 it says, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, you know, because you're observing the time, you're observing your surroundings, you're being patient with all things that you encounter and you're making decisions uh, uh, without impulse. And being filled with the Holy Spirit, it brings forth uh, pleasure in being called a son or a daughter of the Lord, being called of the seed of, of Yashar Allah, of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, because ultimately we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit always because without that spirit, you know, we basically 
or nothing. You know, we're through. And let's get this Psalm of David in the 51st chapter. You know, the whole chapter is good. I'm going to run through it real quick. It says, it says to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O power, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, the Thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be cleansed. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O power, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Why? Because we want to always be filled with the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Because without the Holy Spirit being inside of us, you know, we're subject to sin. We're subject to mistakes. We're su uh, uh, subject to doing those things that are contrary to what the Heavenly Father uh, uh, requires of us. And if we do doing those things that he hateth, he has no need of us and he has the power to discard of us or dispose of us. Meaning what? By way of death. Death by pain, maybe. Or just a, a simple departing from this from this body because he's sick of the troubles that you are, uh, are causing him. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse verse three. It says, for I will pour. Water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And, and that's what it's all about. The heavenly father's spirit. Because when you read in the book of Ezekiel, when it went into those particular dry bones, those dry bones did not have the spirit of the Lord. Those dry bones were spiritless. They were dehydrated. But now we have been poured upon. We have been made hydrated. And we pray that the Heavenly Father constantly uh, 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 rehydrates us. Like if you are into plants, you understand that without rehydrating those plants, those plants wither away. So you have to constantly know when the time is right to where you don't overfill and you do not underwater. And that's synonymous or comparable to the Holy Spirit of the Lord, you know, because even as a fiery spirit, it needs to have wood placed upon it sometimes. Or fiery spirit, it may dwindle out in the cool of the night, you know, but when it goes out, you know, you wake up, you get, you gather more wood, you place more firewood upon it, you get your lighter, you get your matches, you get your, your lighting agent, or material and you light it and you rekindle that that fire which is that spirit in you now let's get the book of john and we're going to get the 14th chapter and this will be in verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So the Lord left us this little book. To always allow us to have the ability to place more wood upon our spirit. When our spirit begins to need to be rekindled. Ultimately, being filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Lord did not leave us comfortless because he knew that these troublous times would be upon us. He knew that we were sheep in the midst of wolves. He knew that he commanded us to be 
wise as serpents, but yet harmless as doves. And that's a life full of sorrow. That's a life full of lamentations and mourning. You know, getting beat down, kicked, kicked continuously in the society, being hated, being despised, being ridiculed. All for the Lord's sake. And you got to have those particular moments to where you, your spirit is reignited. Because without the Holy Spirit of the Lord, you cannot possess wisdom. Without wisdom, you will be unstable. And if you're unstable, you're rocking to and fro, possibly by every wind of doctrine or by your own mischief or your own folly, which will ultimately bring forth de death upon you. Let's get the book of Mark, chapter one, verse eight. It says, I, I, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was that one that was going to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And that's that Holy Spirit that we desire if not to depart from us. And we're going to end it off here in the book of Romans. Firstly, we're going to get chapter 15 and verse 13. It says, now the most high of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. It says Holy Ghost there, but there are no such thing as ghosts. You know, that ghost is that spirit that comes upon man, that comes upon woman, that comes upon child, that comes upon adolescence. The spirit of the Lord, the true spirit that comes from on high, that fills you up and gives you that sensation, that gratification of knowing that he is and that he delivers. And that's going into the father, which is and he that is to deliver, which is the only begotten son. Last scripture here, Romans chapter eight, verse nine. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Lord, he is none of his. Shalom.